When I failed my test, I ate. When I passed my test, I ate. When my dog died, I ate. <laughs> Advent Fit is a podcast that has a holistic approach to physical, spiritual, and mental well-being. In each episode, we share productive ways to live a healthier and happier lifestyle. Unlike other podcasts in this space, Advent Fit gives you a comprehensive approach to fitness without the fluff for the everyday Christian. My fitness journey started in the bathroom. Now let's take a trip down memory lane. This was back in college, AUC, Atlantic Union College, a school that was. And as I already established, I was in the bathroom. So I looked down at my stomach, and I was not happy. I was skinny fat, and I felt that was the worst place to be. I'd rather be skinny or fat. But skinny fat is like lukewarm. I don't want to be lukewarm. You know what God says about lukewarm people. So I felt I was in the worst place. And I knew I needed a change. Cue the Rocky music. So I started working out regularly. And lucky for me, there was a gym inside of the school. There were weights, there was a bench press, there was uh, a squat rack. And I started doing a lot of compound exercises. And compound exercises are any movement where you're using more than one muscle group at a time. When you just start working out, you make a lot of progress more than someone who's been working out for a long time. And I made a lot of beginner gains. One thing that held me back on my fitness journey was nutrition. My nutrition came from Taco Bell. Anybody here uh, uh, is a fan of Taco Bell? No. <laughs> no. Oh, your, your that's my favorite. <laughs> that's my favorite. <laughs> what, what, do you, what do you get? What do you get? Uh, chicken quesadilla. Chicken quesadilla. Oh, man. As a vegetarian, I was, uh, I got the perfection. Some people don't like um, uh, Taco Bell, but I brought my church youth there and I said, let me order for you. And every and everybody became fans of Taco Bell from that point forward. You got to know how to do it. You got to be a professional there. And so when I was in college, I was going to Taco Bell pretty much every single day. And while it's healthier than most, <laughs> while it's healthier than most fast food options, it's not the best if you're doing it every day. So I was eating fast food every day. Back when we were in, in, in AUC, uh, you know, I would run to classes, so I got my exercise because I was late a lot of times. And then sometimes, you know, I would be part of the sports. But when I went to Andrews University for my master's, exercise really wasn't a part of it. I had a car, so I was driving to school. And so that coupled with eating fast food every day, it really, really messed me up. And by the time I got towards the end of my college experience, it was the heaviest I've ever been. Uh, one unhealthy habit that I had that was bad was stress eating. My stress eating was terrible. I could be on the great streak with my diet, and once I heard some bad news, it would be all done. What was worse was just, I, I didn't just eat for stress. I ate for good news as well. <laughs> I was addicted to eating. No, that's true because in my family, yeah. when we're celebrating, it's around it's food. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we associate okay. happiness with food. food and yes. So when you're sad, you go to food. Yeah. And you have the matrix of the family who you just show, show their love by preparing you know, your favorite food. So, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, for me, it was. Yeah. Why we always celebrate with food? Oh, yeah, weddings, uh, you know, everything, everything is food. Everything is food. When I failed my test, I ate. When I passed my test, I ate. When my dog died, I ate. <laughs> and that started to change when I found some healthy habits to deal with my emotions. And if you guys go to adventfake.org right now and sign up for the email list, you can find 50 ways to have a healthier and happier lifestyle. One thing that helped me was mindfulness meditation. And there are many apps that I used. And it taught me about being present, about not worrying about the past or the future. Meditation and mental health exercises have improved my life immensely. I was eating a lot to deal with stress when I was in Andrews, but what I should have been doing was eating more spiritual food. You know, I was going to school to become a pastor, but while I was there, it became the most stressful time of my life up until that point. Uh, I was told that I was going to be hired and to start pastoring. And then a month before I started, they told me, we changed your mind, you're gonna go back to school. And for somebody who is not a fan of school, 
Uh, I was annoyed and I, and I felt like my plan for my life was being delayed. And so I had to go to three years of school. And while Andrews is a good school, I did not like it because I had the major senioritis. Hmm. And, <laughs> and I see some of you guys are nodding there. And so when I, for me, when I was going there and I was stressed out, I, w- I, I was not spending time of God the way I should be, the way I, I should have been spending time of God. And, but then I realized, you know what? I can't do this. I need to stop what I'm doing, and I need to go back to basics. Instead of trying to focus on becoming a pastor, just be a pastor. That was my philosophy while I was in high, my, my last years of high school. That was my philosophy when I was in undergrad. And so I went back to that. And so I didn't need to be hired to be a pastor. Just do it. So I called, uh, I just went through the directory and started calling all these local churches, asking for them if they needed a pastor, even if it was just simply to preach. One pastor finally answered the phone call. And so I ended up uh, living in two places, Michigan while I was in school. And for the weekends, I would live in Indiana where I would pastor, a, a lay pastor two churches there. And so as I was pastoring those churches while also going back to basics or praying, reading the Bible, as I was building up my spiritual life, and as the Bible says, casting all my cares upon him, that really is what kept me sane until I became a full-time pastor in New York. So for me, I uh, was able to get my spiritual life back on track. However, my health was no longer in track. And I realized, I realized at, at, at one point that... I started to develop the pastor's gut. Yeah, it wasn't good. (laughs) And I promised myself I would never get the pastor's gut. And I would never allow myself to get too far off track. And so, you know, I would wear, you know, a baggy shirt or or a hoodie. But what eventually started to happen, my clothes stopped fitting. Mm. Some of you guys mentioned, mentioned about clothes. My clothes stopped fitting, and I did not want to spend more money to buy more clothes. And so I, I started to uh, panic, and so I decided, you know what? I'm going to finish this evangelistic series I was doing with the youth, and as soon as I'm done with that, I'm going to go on a raw food diet. And so I did. I went on a raw food diet, and I decided that I was going to go for at least two weeks. Mm-hmm. After two weeks, I was like, yeah, I can go a little longer. And I did a month. After a month, I could do another month. I did two months. And I said, you know what? I will do at least three months. And at three months mark, I will stop so I, I, won't, I won't feel like I'm in this forever. And so I went three months, no cooked food, no, nothing like that. Purely raw food is what I was eating for three months straight. So we went with the, when I went with the Pathfinders to camping, I brought my own raw food. Whenever I went out to eat with people, raw food. But I knew this was the quickest way to reach my goals here. And I was able to achieve my lifelong dream to get the abs, the core there. Yep. You said raw food. Not cooked. Not cooked. Fruits. So that's a common question I get. Like, what do I eat on a raw food diet? So what I eat is I, I eat fruits, uh, vegetables, not cooked, uh, uncooked vegetables. I eat nuts and I eat uh, seeds and sometimes raw grains there. So nothing cooked. You there. can make recipes with raw food as well. All right, so I was wholeheartedly against veganism. When I thought about vegans, nothing good came to my mind. I thought about the internet warriors who are on the internet talking about how they're vegan in every single chat. When you see something about meat, I'm vegan, this is terrible, meat is murder. Also, I thought about annoying people constantly mentioning their veganism. And I thought about sad food at churches. (laughs) I watched so many vegan documentaries that did not convince me. I even enjoyed some great wings to one of those documentaries. (laughs) And then I was told to watch Game Changers. I thought it was just another... One of those vegan documentaries. Didn't I tell you to watch that? You and somebody else told me to watch you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Game Changers. <laughs> and I was told by two people to watch Game Changers. So when I watched it, this one was different. It wasn't preachy and it was practical. And after watching the documentary, I became an A minus vegan. What? Yeah. And a, uh, a, let me explain A minus vegan. So, that's, that's why I didn't even say anything because I knew people were going to ask questions. So an A minus <laughs> vegan. So I'm a teacher, so I use math in this. So I'm not vegan is where I'm vegan for 90% of the year. So I have 300, I'm vegan for 
most of the year. So I have 32 cheat days, 34 cheat days, and 12 of those cheat days I save for the holidays. So I have 12 cheat days for November and December, so like the 12 days of Christmas. And then I have the other 22 cheat days for January to October. And 365 minus 34 equals about 90%. So that's why I call myself an A minus vegan. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. You know, and, and, and the, reason why, the reason why we encourage that is because uh, that's, that's the teacher in him, right? That's the teacher in him. The, and the, so it's, it's not simple. It's not so, simplified. So I, I'll have to simplify it for the lay people here. I, I, I'm not a teacher, so I, I, and, I, and I'm not a mathematician. But basically what he did was for 90% of the year, he did the math and figured that if he does the majority of the year as a vegan, then that's an overall healthy lifestyle, right? A lot of people think that that they need to be 100% on something or, or it's either all or nothing. And they end up not doing anything. Mm. I had one person in my church and she was, was telling me, I was telling her about my, about my diet and stuff like that. She was like, oh, but you know what? I can never give up. Uh, my, my lasagna and pizza. And so therefore, I'm, not, I'm just going to stick with my diet, w which was an unhealthy diet. I was like, well, why don't you have it on special occasions? That's okay, as long as your overall lifestyle is a healthy one there. And so we're talking about that is his way of accomplishing his goals. Oh, somebody asked a question. Uh, do either of you detox and how often? No, I don't do that. So I'll, I'll, tell, I'll, I'll tell you about the first time I went on, the, on a detox. Uh, I, went, I decided to do one of those salt water detoxes, right? And so when I did it, I misread the instructions mm. and I read tablespoon instead of teaspoon. Mm. And I put that amount of tablespoons and I felt like I was gonna throw up and I had already gone running. And I decided from that point that, uh, that was one of the earlier times when I did, went on a raw diet. I decided, you know what? I don't need to try all these fancy stuff. Just go on a, in a lifestyle, and Definitely. that did the trick yeah. for me. There's a couple of times I may do like a short one. Uh, like for instance, especially when I did the 300 diet, mm -hmm. sometimes your body loses the momentum because you're t doing the cheat days. And so sometimes what I would do is I would do like a uh, drink, like maybe uh, like two cups, two to four cups of carrot juice of pure 100% carrot juice, and that helps to get the flow, if you know what I mean. Go get back, <laughs> back on track there. So sometimes a little thing like that, but in terms of a full detox, that's good if you're having some real health issues. Mm -hmm. I think that's uh, really good. Uh, but again, you wanna do the research before you go into any major detox. I'm gonna take one uh, last question here that's on the chat. Can ingesting green juices work as a detox? Well, you know, the Bible talks about the herbs are the healing of the nations, right? Again, if you're dealing with sicknesses, then that's good. There are some really good resources and books out there. Again, do your research. For me, I tr many times I do a green juice even in my diet, not as a detox, but just, just to be able to get it into my, my regular routine, whether it's a green smoothie or a green juice. Those are all really good things there. But I would suggest smoothies over juicing because you yeah. have the fiber with the smoothies. Absolutely. So for me, I definitely try to go with smoothies way more than juicing mm -hmm. uh, there. So we talked about holistic fitness today. We talked about holistic fitness. Holistic fitness incorporates all aspects of fitness. That's what our podcast, Avin Fit, is all about. You can find us on YouTube. You can uh, showcase the, the next slide there. You can, show, you can find us on YouTube. You can find us on Spotify. You can find us on Apple Podcasts. Uh, if you just go to avonfit.org, you can find uh, all those links there, or you can just type it in into your search bar. For me personally, if you want to continue to follow my other uh, social media accounts, as well as my blogs, my sermons, things like that, you can find me on waynejamel.com, really complicated uh, website, <laughs> waynejamel.com. And you can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Mr. Woke, that's W-H-O-K-E. And so next time, I'm Wayne Jamel. And I'm C. Jeffrey White at the Seas for Congress. Thank you for having us at Youth Congress, and we'll see you next week, folks. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. If you enjoyed this video, you got to check out the unedited full version. That's, uh, that's like a director's cut type of thing, mm, you know? Yes. Director's cut where there is no cutting? No, <laughs> no, no cutting. We were live. Yes. Raw. Raw, uncut version. And so you could check that out 
by clicking the video that's popping up on the screen or is in your description Maybe. or both. Maybe, might be popping up on the screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or you could just go to the previous, uh, the episode, previous episode yes. that showed up on this YouTube channel and you will enjoy it and, and it's going to be awesome. It was our first ever live event. That's right, that's right. So check that out and you can see the interaction that we have with the audience, those that were in person and online. Thanks guys. Please like and share. Subscribe. Subscribe, yes. <laughs>